Hello, welcome to Uncle Cthulhu Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a primer video on 6mm Wargame. Bit of an introduction, talking about what it is, a few paint techniques, basing techniques, manufacturers, and just giving you a bit of an overview of what 6mm Wargaming is about. Because 6mm Wargaming is something I've done over the years in my career as a Wargame career, in my uh, hobby as a Wargamer. And 6mm refers to the average height of a, a model. So if you look at this unit of goals here, a base of goals, and there you go, that's my thumb for comparison. So that each man on this base will be 6mm tall, also known as 1 300th for like a model and scale. So as you see there, you're not going to be dealing with individual models, it's going to be mounted on bases. So if you're going to be using them for wargaming, it's going to be your base will be the sort of standard maneuver element of your wargames rules. And that's the key advantage to 6mm scale, is you're able to put on the field large armies. So imagine I, I could probably comfortably field 50 plus units bases on this on a 6x4 table. It's going to look impressive, it's going to look like an army, it's going to allow me to manoeuvre and have that battlefield feel of a commander in charge of your army fighting across the battle. Certainly I have Waterloo in 6 mil, I've got a 6x4 foot cigar box battle mat I put out on the table. I've got about 4,000 Napoleonic 6 mil figures painted, based. And um, we've recreated Waterloo, Ligny, and Catabra a few times on the tabletop. And yeah, you really do feel like you're in control of an army, command decisions, maneuvers occurring, and it's a completely different feel to say my 28 mil black powder games which feels more like uh it's, it's a division more like a line of british rifles and muskets holding off french attack columns so the other key advantage you got with six mil is storage so if i pull this one of my really useful boxes here as you can see double edged because i've got the insert in this box top i've got a republican roman underneath i've got a carthaginian army and the stack as well so i normally find that when i'm doing a, a period i'll have three boxes one with one army in second with the other opposing army in and a third with the terrain but there you go if I... and because we're on bases there's and because we've got a low center of gravity they don't tend to sort of fall over or get chipped or get damaged in the boxes either these boxes tend to be up and down, in the attic, out the attic, as, as needed. I mean, they do get quite heavy, even though they are small, there's a lot of metal in, in 6 mil armies. So what we have is the ability to create large armies, um, fight large-scale battles, which is a different tactical exercise to your norm, to, to much bigger sets of models. You've got I like say some rules, so for Age of Hannibal, that would be a unit. Whereas in Warmaster, you would have three of these bases forming a unit. Depending on what you want to get out of the rules, depends what you what you're going to use. And even if you see here, I've painted on shield designs, so you can get a lot of detail into the model. So painting the models. So just like with my 10 mil models, I'll mount them on strips. And I'll go along and paint the same colour on all the models. Boom, 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 boom. And then once it's dry, come through, paint them, and paint them in batch painting like that. So there's some Hellenic foot command from Bacchus. I'm also doing some VC for Vietnam from Irregular Miniatures. And generally, your models will come in strips, as you see there. Strips of four. Now these, because the command will need to be chopped off individually, mounted on the base individually. Whereas if you look at these fellas here, you've got the strips of four mounted, so four, 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 four. So I haven't needed to chop those individually. So I've mounted them one, two, three, four on the base. The bases I've used is 40 mil by 20 mil. I think units were, unless you're looking at pipe blocks, units were generally wider than the word deep. So a couple of things I've done there. So for my more regular miniatures, 
So war bands, for example, I've squished them all together on the basis. So that's a command group if I'm using Warmaster. And if you see there, I've got like three rows, but they're all squashed up. There's no gappage between them. Whereas the more organized lines, so the Carthaginian spearmen, put in nice, neat ranks of troops to show the difference between, at a glance, ordered and, and more, say, warband formations on the battlefield. Certainly I've seen Napoleonic bases where you've got your, your lines at the back of the base, bases like deep and you've got some skirmishes on, even some with bigger bases where you might have two battalions on a base as well, depending on, on the set of rules. I prefer individual bases that can form up together in bigger formations and that gives me flexibility with rules. As I said earlier, Age of Hannibal or use three bases it's a war, war master. So I've done some pretty fun things uh, with, with chariots, ancient British chariots. So chariots would circle up to the enemy, sort of spin around, guys off would jump off, throw some javelins, jump back on the chariot, race away, get some more javelins and go back up. You see there, I've got some javelin ears that just jumped off. This one here, if you see the red chariots turned back away, guys off from his javelin. So I've been able to model some things like that that, that uh, you might not be able to see or model in, in, in bigger scales. And certainly with 6mm, even though it is 6mm, you can get some details in. So this is my Roman generals. Paint some nice details on it. Um, I generally use, from a war gamer, sort of square rectangular bases for units, round bases, and actually Tuppences and pennies are probably the cheapest way to get round bases for your for your miniatures. Dot super glue and sand, and then I paint painted the sand. Now one of the other advantages for six mm of terrain is dead easy to to do. So there you go. That's a Gaul or ancient British village. See a few houses, sheep pen. So. That's been all base coat and shaded, ready for highlighting, bring out all the detail. But you're able to make nice wee vignettes like that. Certainly I've done a Hougamon, I've got La Hay Saint, a whole load of stuff for Napoleonics. I've done some Spanish terrain as well for fighting in the peninsula. I've got some Vietnam stuff I'm going to be building up and painting terrain-wise at the moment. So it's really quite interesting what you can do with terrain. And like I say, that's not taking up a vast amount of space either. So, painting, basin, manufacturers. So, there's several manufacturers, not a great deal. Now, what I have found with 6mm manufacturers, it's less easy to combine different ranges. Certainly, when I was doing my Napoleonics, I had some Herox and Rose, I had some Bacchus, and I had some Adler. Worked out what I was going to do, and eventually got rid of everything that wasn't Bacchus and, and just focused on back, Bacchus for my project. So, Bacchus. Bacchus is probably my favourite 6mm manufacturer. They, like I say, they come on strips that will uh, glue together on the bases. They're fairly well detailed. They're what I would call chunky for war gamers. So um, details like helmets or, or weapons that might be slightly exaggerated, but that makes it easier to paint. Uh, they've got fairly comprehensive ranges. Generally comes in packs. They're about 770 a pack of 96 infantry, 24 strips. Uh, cavalry is 880 for 15 strips. You can get army packs as well. Um, certainly my ancients are predominantly Bacchus and my Napoleonics predominantly Bacchus as well. The next manufacturer, Irregular Miniatures. So Irregular Miniatures come modelled on their own bases. So I'm doing some Vietnam irregular miniatures at the moment. I don't know how well you can see these. So some GIs, some VC. Now the irregular range is, is probably the most comprehensive range out there. The miniatures do need a bit of extra paint work to make the details pop. Certainly if you look at the website, they don't look great with a mediocre paint job. If you're fairly confident with painting, you can make them look pretty good. But the best thing about a regular is the terrain and the six mil terrain ranges is vast. 
Uh, you can buy settlement ranges. Certainly, I've got a US uh, fire base, Vietnam village. I've got a Mediterranean village. Even buying a few huts and some walls and stuff, and that cost me about six quid's worth of worth of stuff on there. The terrain, like it says, is great. And actually, Irregulars probably is one of the best miniatures for turn around my order and communication for my orders. Um, yeah, I really like, always have liked Irregular miniatures. But like I say, the figures probably is a bit older now and do need a bit of extra work with painting. Next up is Eurook and Ros. So I think Eurook and Ros look a bit skinny. They've got primarily tons of stuff World War II and modern tanks, infantry, etc. But they do have packs for pre -his pre those periods, so World War One, Napoleonic Ancients, Medieval, for example. They come in packs with integrated command and stuff. So it's a bit harder to pick and choose what you want. With Bacchus, if you want a certain type, you order what you want. You regularly order the stands you want. Whereas these come in packs of about 50, 60 models. And build up like say so they the the skinny and the bases the kind of individual bases all, all together in a strip so you would need to paint them up cut them out mount them on bases for the historical stuff before World War Two gets a bit fiddly. And like I say the miniatures are, do tend to be a bit skinnier. Adler, another manufacturer, Adler tend to be a bit bigger than six millimeter and they predominantly do Napoleonic and American Civil War and they're really nicely cast um, again strips uh, which are again individuals if I remember correctly individuals are like cast the idea is you cut them off and, and mount them on your strips yourself as opposed to say Bacchus and Irregular where the strip is designed to be the strip that it's deployed on uh, GHQ I'm not had much look with GHQ GHQ um, miniatures GHQ tends to be 1 285th I think so slightly bigger than 6 mil and they tend to specialize in armor and they're beautiful models tanks certainly if I was doing micro armor I'd maybe look at GHQ and finally there's a company called Rapier and I got some of those with some of the Celtic stuff I got Gallic stuff I got um, they tend to be a lot of similar poses with rapier miniatures. Other than that, I haven't had much truck with them. And like I say, the, the thing with 6mm is you're probably going to pick a manufacturer you like and stick to with, stick with that manufacturer. Certainly, I am generally do most of my miniatures with uh, Bacchus. Vietnam, I could only really find an Irregular. So I've got the Irregular miniatures. But Irregular is probably the place I go to to look at for my terrain. So there you go, that's my introduction to 6mm Wargaming. Like I say I love 6mm Wargaming. Uh, you get a real sense of your army on the battlefield with the right set of rules. You're going to get manoeuvre, flexibility. I'm actually writing a set of 6mm Vietnam rules at the moment for, for Vietnam to do what I want them to do. I generally will use a Warmaster style set of rules for other stuff, but I've got Age of Handle, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to pick and adapt sets of rules that I want for the tabletop. Uh, maybe, like I say, Ancients, I've got a choice of Age of Hannibal, Hail Caesar, or War Master. So, getting a chance to play on the tabletop with these fellas now they're all painted, I'm really looking forward to. So that's my guide to 6mm Wargaming. It's talking about the size of models, the fact you're going to be basing them, your painting, and your manufacturers as well. Rules, there's a host of whole different Wargames rules out there as well. So, if you've got any strong opinions on 6mm Wargaming, let me know what they are. I always love looking at nice 6mm models. So that is goodbye from me, and you have a great day, week, Month war gaming as well. Bye.